G'day, welcome to another basic Moose for DCS World lesson. Today we're looking at uh, core menu, um, or basically adding those little F10 menus you see on servers sometimes. And rather than setting them up in the mission editor, we're going to use Moose to set them up, which is far simpler, no flags required, um, no radio buttons, none of that stuff. So let's um, dive straight in and have a look at the classes guide for core menu. Uh, what one thing I will say with this, it's it's not very um, clear, and it's a very short um, explanation of what it does. So it's not a bad one to have a, a basic uh, moose for DCS world lesson on. Uh, you can have a read through it. Um, you're probably not going to get a, a lot out of it um, until you start playing with it. So let's have a play with it. Um, what I want to do today, if we have a look at my mission editor. I have popped in a USS Tarawa and I've just popped an aircraft on the deck that we can sit in and um, have a look what we're doing. So I've set this up on our public server um, and it's not a bad example of what you can do with um, menus. I want to deploy a sea target off the back of the Tarawa so that we can, when we're out at sea, just deploy it using the F10 other menu and then uh, engage the target, and then when it's destroyed, we go out and deploy another one. The um, C target I'm using is this mod by Joey45, which is sort of a strange one. Um, if we have a look at what it is, it's one of these floating C targets with a nice smiley face on it. And I've set it to the country um, being neutral, so Switzerland, and I have nothing against Switzerland whatsoever, very nice people. Um, I just needed to make it neutral so that when we engage the target we don't get a um, a team kill on the server. So we have that as a C target, that'll be deployed off the back of the Tarawa um, when we request it with the menu, and um, we can deploy them as many as we like. After we destroy one, we can just deploy another. Uh, got a couple of different skins for it. Um, got this flagship one, which uh, that way when we lose one, they can return it to the owners. Um, but I think we'll go with the smile. All right. So that's all I've set up in the mission editor. And what I need to do is create some menus. Now, the traditional methods in the mission editor creating a menu is to come in here, create a new function. Um, or new trigger, I should say, and we can go uh, once, um, new, and add radio item. So where is it? Radio item add for group or for coalition, or just write radio item add for the mission. So in this case, it would be for coalition. And then we have to define what we're going to do with that radio item in here. And if you want it to reactivate, you'll have to loop it back around. Uh, it's a real fiddle, so um, most is easier. So let's have a look at how we do that using a script. So what we have um, currently, if I go to back to the screen capture, we have a couple of different ways to do it. So we looked at um, a menu for coalition you can see we have that here. We have a core menu uh, mission, uh, which is the whole mission, which was similar to adding that radio item, or this one, coalition, which is the one I just tried to add using a radio item as a trigger. And there's also to group. So it's the same functions there. Um, and then we have these ones below, which is mission command, coalition command, group command. So that's the one that actually sends a function and, and activates the trigger. So we can have these menus layered, but I think the best way to do it is we just look at how to do it. Now there's some examples here, um, which I didn't find that helpful for what I want to use menus for, but um, it's about adding or removing um, the menus, depending on what the status of different aircraft are or players. So let's have a look at building our own script to use these. That's a lot simpler, because this is a basic Moose for DCS World lesson. Uh, I've set up a normal blank 
Lua source file in Notepad++. C targets for Moose Lesson, Lesson 8. The first thing um, I want to do is I want to deploy um, our C target. So I need to design a function um, for deploying the C tag target. So let's um, jump in and design a function. Now, you can make any function as detailed as you want. In this case, it'll be a spawn, right? Because we're spawning something. Um, but because the ship's going to be moving, we're going to need to get some uh, point vector data um, from the unit and then use it to spawn at that point so that it always spawns from the ship. Otherwise, we could, we'd just be spawning in where a fixed place on the map wherever I put down our sea target. So let's um, just say uh, spawn function. Spawn function for C target. Okay, that'll do. Okay, let's write our function. Okay, so we've got function. Uh, we can call it whatever we like, so let's just call it uh, drop C target. And then we'll give, I need, I said I needed some of that point vector data. So we'll give, in this function, we'll locally define some stuff to get that data. So local, um, we'll call it point vector data. Or what about just point vector for Tarawa? There we go. Um, and that data equals, we want to find where the tarot is. So unit, uh, find by name. And I've named the ship in the mission editor. So this is the unit name, not the group name. So the unit name, USS Tarawa. And if you've been following along, you'll note that I always call my units and the group's the same thing, just to avoid any confusion, and I don't make mistakes that way when I'm using them in scripts. So uh, USS Tarawa. Okay. And so there's um, point vector T. It'll be equal find unit by name, and then we want to get that vec2 data. So it's two-dimensional data. So I don't. I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to spawn this on the water, so I don't care what altitude it spawns at. So all I need is the two vector data. So get vec2. Now all the stuff we're looking at here is um, straight out of the spawn um, classes guide, and you can get as detailed and funky as you like with it, or you can just spawn in its spot or whatever you like. But in this case, we want to deploy it off the tower. So this is where you'd go and have a look at. Um, a lesson on spawning if you haven't done that. Uh, right, so that's that, and then um, we need to define our C target, or we can just spawn it if we're just spawning the one type. What about, what about we spawn um, randomly different skins? There we go, let's do something else. So, okay, local, uh, we'll call this C targets. Targets, no, targets, all right. So local C targets, uh, that can equal, we create a bit of a table here of a few different skins. So the first, I called the one in the mission editor, if you remember, if I just pull that up now, um, I called him Tommy1, so Tommy-1. So we'll make, what don't we make a Tommy-1, Tommy-2, Tommy-3, so, I go into my here, control C, and we'll paste another one there. He's already called Tommy-2, and there's another one, Tommy-3. Um, they all need to be late activated, otherwise they're going to start um, floating there, and we can spawn another one, but they'll be, we'll, we'll leave wreckage all over the place. So let's just late activate all three of them, and they're all named as we need in the group. And you can see it adds that dash one on there. That doesn't matter because we're actually spawning a group here, not a unit, but just following my own rules, I'm going to 
clear that out and make it Tommy dash two. And this one could be Tommy dash three. Okay, so we've got Tommy dash three, two, one, and we need to change the skins. So what about we give that one? Uh, we'll give him that skin. So on the front, another smiley face, sort of. And we'll make Tommy Dash 3. Uh, the black skin, black sheep skin, maybe. Do that. All right. I've also got the Eye of Osama skin here. There we go. That'll do. All right, there we go. We've got three different skins that will spawn randomly. So back to our script. Right. Um, so we just need to define this table here, which is uh, what the names Tommy one, two, and three. I think. Yep. Okay. So Tommy dash one and Tommy dash two. All right, so now we've got a table there of uh, called C targets. Uh, what do we call it? C targets Tango for Tarawa, just to match that point back data. All right, so that, those two things we provided locally in this script. And now we actually need to add the spawn function in here. So let's do that. Um, I'll just call it spawn Tommy T, yeah. Okay, spawn Tommy T and equals, so it'll be spawn new. Again, look at the spawn lesson if you don't know how to spawn stuff. Spawn new and we want to spawn any one of those Tommies um, and it will then, we're going to randomize the, the one it spawns. So let's just start with Tommy dash one. Okay. And let's randomize it using our, our, our table of C targets T. So init random. Randomize template. Okay, net randomized template. And what do we call it? C targets T. There you go. So because we've defined it here locally, C targets T, we can now just add that in there. And when it spawns Tommy Dash 1, it'll spawn either Tommy Dash 1, 2, or 3 randomly. All right, so that's that one. And now we want to spawn Tommy. So spawn Tommy T. But instead of just writing spawn and closing it, we want to spawn it not where he was, but from that point vector data that we got from the, the unit. So, so that'll be spawn from vec2. Okay, and our VEC2 data was called, uh, what do we call it? Point VEC2. Okay, and I don't want any offsets, so we're just going to call it 0 and not O, 0. I know. So with no offsets, I just want it to spawn right at that point where the tarot is when we trigger it. Okay, now because it's a function, we've got to end it. So let's end that function. All right, so there's our um, function that we want to occur. 
all defined and ready to go. Now we've just got to add our menus. So let's um, add menu items. Okay. Uh, I don't know. So local, we'll just call it menu coalition blue. Same as the classes guide had. And it can equal, uh, so we want to do a menu coalition. So we have a look at the classes guide quickly. Remember we had, um, we want to do this one, the top layer menu, so menu coalition. Okay, so it's all capitalized. You can see that if we go to it, there it is there. So menu coalition. Um, new and you can see how it's got parent menu here that allows me to have nested menus so we could have um, why don't we do that let's just do it all right so we'll do the first one um, if we go back in here and we go menu underscore Coalition and do a new one. And we were using the blue coalition, that's what we want to spawn from. So, coalition dot side dot blue. And now we can name our menu uh, whatever we want to name it. So, what about we call it? Uh, uh, range practice or yeah that'll do range practice so you, because it's a name you've got to put it in here so this can be anything this is what what will appear in the menu range practice nice one practice there we go and that and then we can close that out I know. So there's our first menu that will be in the F10 other menu. And then we said we wanted to do a, a nested menu. So let's do that one. And we'll call this, uh, we'll call it uh, nested menu. That'll do. Sorry. Menu blue. No, this is completely unnecessary for the, the function we're doing, but I'm just doing it to demonstrate. Um, and it will be another menu coalition new, all right? Yeah, but it'll have a parent. Um, so let's just copy this. Save us some time. It'll just be another one of these, but it'll have a parent menu. we go. Um, so it's still in your coalition new, coalition dot blue. And we want to call this one Tarawit C target. Deploy. No, that's actually not what we want to do. We want Sarawa, Tarawa. Why don't we just call it Tarawa? That'll do. Okay. And if we go back here, you'll see that there is the ability in here to have the coalition, the menu text, and then a parent menu. So let's add that in now, that parent menu. Duck out of here. And now at the back here we can add a parent menu and the parent menu was what we called this one here okay all right so we now have a nested menu for no reason <laughs> um, now we need our command menu 
So we want to actually trigger something. So if we go back and have a quick look at here, you can see um, we have these menu, coalition, command. So managers, command menus for the whole coalition. Okay, cool. So that's the one we want. Let's have a look at that. Menu, coalition, command. So you can see you've got coalition, the menu text, again, parent menu. So we'll have to define where, which one it sits in and we want it to sit in our nested menu. Then the command menu function, or we wrote a function, and then we could have an argument for that function as well. But we won't be using that, we'll just be triggering our function. All right, so let's jump back in and write that. Okay. So we'll call this uh, menu tarawa. Now this one is a menu coalition command new. So we'll use that part of it. Underscore again, command. And new. Again, uh, we can use um, all this stuff out of here. We'll cut and paste that because it uses the same format, but we've got to add a function to it as well. Uh, coalition side blue again, uh, and this one we'll call deploy C target. Except this time the parent menu is going to be nested menu blue because that's where we want it to sit. There we go. And then if we remember from the class guide, we've got to add our function in. So we have a look at our function. Let's go back to class guide quickly. So there is, so it goes parent menu, then command menu function. Okay, so quickly back here again. The command menu function is pretty easy. It's just this drop C target. That's what we want to do because that's what we named our function. So drop that in here. Okay, and then we can close that up. And there we are, without messing around with triggers and all sorts of stuff like that, we have created a nested menu, a function to do something cool, and we can save that. And let's add that to the mission editor as a uh, trigger, so to bring our script in. So if we go... Um, back to our mission editor now and have a look. All I have to do now, I've got all the units defined in there that I'm using in my script. Um, we This is the from our previous lesson, which was um, we were doing asset load of our events test Lua. So why don't we just clone that to save us some time and time more than five instead of loading um, that events test, we're going to load um, the script we just did, which is called C target space test dot lua. So if I go into that now and have a quick look, we've got uh, let's get rid of that, and it was C target all one word with a capital S. space test. Now this is all this is is what I call my script we just we just wrote. Um, so we're asset loading that one time more than five and we're doing it once we only have to call it once um, and that's as simple as that. Now that's that 
you know, adding radio items. Well, we don't want to do that. That was just me demonstrating. So let's just delete that out. So there we go. We're done. Let's save that. All right. Let's um, jump in and have a look at what happens to our menu items. All right, and I'm back. Now I jumped into the mission, ran it, menus appeared, deployed the C target, and nothing happened. Uh, so I checked the log, and there's a problem with my function. A pretty simple one. Um, when I defined the function here, I actually forgot to actually make it a function. So there we go. Um, save that. And that will work now. So let's jump back in just shows you the importance of uh, looking through the log and finding those um, errors that you've made. Okay, so here we are in the mission. Let's jump into the aircraft on the deck so it gets us close to the terrier where we want to be. Um, and we see our menus come up. Now if I click other, um, it's not here yet because we had to wait five seconds for it to load. So if we go back to previous, other again, and here's our top level menu that we defined. In our script, range practice. If I click that, there's our nested menu, Tarawa. So I envisage, you know, I could, in under range practice, I could have different ships or different target options around the place where I'm spawning things in. Um, so we click Tarawa, and here's our deploy C targets without a capital D. Well done. Uh, let's deploy it and let's have a look and see if we can deploy our C target. Okay, so deploy, let's go to the external view and we should get from our VEC2 position our C target pop out from the back of the tarawa and float off and we can then take off and engage it and it should randomize the skin on it so there we go um, but our first C target has popped out and it's the eye of Osama there we go so there's a really simple look at adding menus and a nested menu into DCS and in this case we've used it to spawn something. Hope you get something out of it. Thanks for watching.